Episode 2, coming at you guys, me and Big Papa, back on the podcasting scene, really excited about it, um, playing for you some Misfits, Saturday Night, it's one of my favorite songs by them, uh, you should definitely check it out, uh, how you doing Big Papa? Not bad actually, I'm liking the, I'm liking the yeah. weather actually. You said you're what? I'm liking the weather actually. Dude, I'll tell you one thing. I think I've completely flipped. I'm all in on fall now. Oh, it's great because you, uh, it, uh, it just has this certain feeling to it. And you know what it is? It's the smell. Dude, yeah, there's like a cleanness in the air a little bit. That, uh, all- the, that like woodsy, uh, smoky, uh, kind of smell. Yeah, no, that's true. Especially when like October like starts coming around and stuff. Um, but like, I'm into like the whole cool breeze and stuff. Oh yeah, and especially after a workout. Oh yeah, dude. Like yeah, it's you know, like you hit the weights really hard, and then you like take your shirt off, and then like go stand out in the cold, you know? Oh yeah, just like you know, with my arms at my sides, just you know, all triumphantly like and everything. No, I, I used to do it because uh, you can sand out. He always sit, well when I did lift weights because now I'm lazy and I don't lift weights, so I'm like medium papa. But like, uh, no, no, you can sand down his book. He always said that. Uh, you know, after a workout, and as you know, that's one of the, that's basically the first bodybuilder. He always said that after a workout, you know, you should take like a freezing cold bath. It's pretty funny to think that uh, he was talking about that so long ago, and now it's commonplace with ice baths, cryotherapy, and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the issue with fall has always been this, man, is that it goes right into winter, and the thing about winter is I love the aesthetic of winter i just hate the cold you know what i'm saying like i love like the whole lonely kind of calm kind of grim and frostbitten grim and frostbitten like kind of you know aesthetic but from afar like i don't i hate being in cold i kind of wish i liked the cold because again i love the aesthetic of cold you know the metal that we listen to a lot uh, has images and imagery of, you know, frosty areas and everything. So, you know, it, it, it's something that I really enjoy, but it's just, dude, I can't, I hate the cold. I hate the clothes you have to wear when it's cold. It's just, it's awful all around, you know? It's just one of those things. I mean, the, the funny thing is winter used to be my favorite time because of the cold, but as I get older, I know I'm talking like I'm 50 or something, but <laughs> as I get older... I don't really like it anymore, the cold. It's not, I don't, I don't hate it. I mean, I'm a pretty big dude, so it's not as if I walk outside and I'm like, Jesus! But, <laughs> you know, I, it, it, it's not like it used to be. I, I don't enjoy it as much as I did. Yeah, and I mean, like, snow's pretty cool and everything until you get snowed in. Like, being snowed in sucks. You've never been snowed in. I've been snowed in. Where? At my house. That's not being snowed in. Like, what would you call being snowed in? I'm from Pennsylvania, you bastard. That's <laughs> <laughs> like you, being snowed in is when you actually have to use what one refers to as a pantry because you are snowed in. Explain this to, to our listeners. Snowed in meaning you are snowed in. Just that. Meaning there is no way in hell you are going anywhere for about five to six days. Oh, God, that's awful. Explain the pantry thing. You know, where people actually have a pantry, you know, where they have, a, you know, canned foods and all this. Oh, stuff. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, because when I grew up where I lived, like, I could see my neighbor on a hill, like, <laughs> half a mile to a mile away, and that was about it. Yeah, explain to people, like, kind of where you're from, because it was kind of like a desolate kind of yeah, like, nowhere. It's about, it's, oh, like an hour from Pittsburgh. 
kind of known as like the mining section. It was mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it, which is funny because now I live in Fredericksburg and it, it's really great because there's all these people who are like doing the whole redneck thing and everything like that. And they're like, I'm country. I'm like, you're not <laughs> shit. <laughs> The reason why I don't act like you or a tool is because being country isn't necessarily positive. I, I, it's like, especially like when I listen to the country songs on the radio talking about trucks and four wheel and all this other dumb shit. It's like, well, it's not true country because usually if you're true country, you can't afford any of those things. Yeah, right. In the middle of nothing. What was that song that pissed you off where it's like, I work weekends if I have to? Yeah. It's like, I work weekends if I have to. And I call it sick. It's like, dude, you're taking the piss. You suck. I work every, I work every weekend, you piece of trash. He's like, just listening to all these things about having his bravado and his tough sense of self. is like, I served in the army. That's where I learned to shoot. That's bullshit. If you're, you learned how to shoot when you were like, five <laughs> yeah your grandpa would be like all right now we're gonna go shoot guns it's all like should you really be letting five-year-old kids shoot guns why not <laughs> like you know it's <laughs> so was that was that your upbringing yeah <laughs> so you so so do you own any guns no i don't own any guns but i've shot such a large variety of guns it's pretty ridiculous yeah right right um so I wanted to tell you, I, I know that I kind of like told you a little bit, but I wanted to tell you again. Um, so just for everyone kind of wondering like where my podcasts have been and everything, I've been filming some podcasts, but some of the hosts that I do on other podcasts and stuff. So if you're, if you're subscribed, I don't know if anyone is right now, but if you're on iTunes or whatever, and you're listening to my podcast, I have other shows with other hosts and stuff. And uh, Sailor Sam. yeah, Sailor Sam. And there's like some uh, editing that needs to take place in some of those or like uh, podcasts that I wanted to do where people just kind of flaked out on me. Um, you know, whatever. So that's why there's kind of been a delay, but I want to tell you, man, like I keep, every time I go to SoundCloud and I see the likes, it's, it's this podcast. Like people love, they must love you or something, man. Like you have, uh, right now you're probably tied top two. Actually, no, you're number two. Uh, no, you're not number two. You're, you're up there. You're at least top three or five. Uh, in the shows that I've done so far. And you've only done like one episode, you know? I mean, it's good to know that I, I know I suck at life, but at least apparently I don't suck at ranting or talking about things. I mean, that's a pretty basic skill to have. I would hope that I'm good at something. Yeah, you're very, you're a very entertaining and unique guy that a lot of people just kind of want to listen to. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said it? Thanks, bro. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks man. Ugh. Uh, so, you know, hopefully this one does well as well. Um, but I heard that, uh, you know, congratulations on your moving up at your current job. Yeah, I did. I moved up. I got another raise. I'm doing really well. Uh, if you would have told me that I would end up doing this sort of thing as a profession, there's no way I would have believed you. I totally would have believed it. It's but, definitely it's definitely your kind of job, too, because I mean, you're in the pond industry, right? Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there were... <laughs> There were there were like three things that I thought that you would be really good at. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things you're, you could be really good at, but like three that three professions that I've always kind of wanted to see you try. It's weird that like you did one of them. Um, like one, I'm not gonna say on air. The other one is like Repo Man, and then another one is like I could see you doing like Pawn. You know, like just kind of just you know dealing with people and being like, yeah, I'll give you like three dollars for this 1776 Declaration of Independence or whatever. Right. Well, you know. and before that, I was a mechanic, and I got tired of just – when you're a mechanic, there's just so much bullshit. Yeah, it, right. It, oh, yeah. You know, there's always, like, the, the, the soccer mom who, like, <laughs> drives the van on 95 for, like, 40 minutes and then decides to get the oil changed, and she's, like, in the waiting room. Why is it done? You know, and you <laughs> – crack the oil and get like third degree burns or you know you, you always have to do a shop hierarchy it's like well you can't do that alignment why not well because it's chester's alignment why is that because he does all the alignments but doesn't that give him an inflated check yes it does but why can't i have it because you can't deal with it so oh wow i didn't know this oh yeah just dumb shit and uh you know also that i think the main reason i quit and this is a lot of people are probably gonna be like, "Oh, Shane, you suck." Oh, 
just AC the goddamn shop. <laughs> what do you what do you what do you mean? Just AC the shop, man. That's all you have to do. AC? Right. What do you mean? Because AC. when you're a mechanic, nine times out of ten, you're working in a all cinder block brick unair conditioned building. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. telling me about that. How much water would you drink a day? At the worst of it, three gallons. Jesus. Yeah, and it's like, it's just so stupid. And uh, like after a couple times of like almost passing out, and the funny thing is it, it's pretty bad. I mean, I built decks and stuff too where you're like right under the sun and you're, you're sweating so much that you can't even see because it's just like dripping in your eyes and you feel like a slug that's like kind of like just like bunching up in the heat. The mechanic is way worse because you're not doing all that, but you're like slowly basting yourself. Because you're like in an oven, right? You're in an, if it's like 95 degrees outside, it sure as hell is 110 in there. Oh, wow. And a fan doesn't help. Nothing helps. And, you know, I don't want people to be like, Shane, you're a pussy. But whatever, man. If you do it every day, 11 hours a day, eventually you get to a point where you just get sick of the shit. And what are brakes like and everything? Not like car bra car brakes, but you know, do they let like what what's it like if you need to take a break or whatever? Are you const constantly standing and working on cars and everything? Oh, uh, it's it's actually pretty real. It's actually really relaxed on that because nobody cares. I mean, if it, you know, if you want to take a break, you just I don't. It's not like I ask anybody. It just whatever. I'm going and taking a break. The mechanic is a job where you're kind of allowed a lot of leeway on that sort of thing, unless it's a very corporate position. Right. Okay. Cool. But you, so you like what you're doing now better though. I do. I do. I do. Okay. I, I miss, I miss physical work a lot because this is the first job I've never done something with my body. You know what I mean? But, uh, I guess maybe it's better that way. So, I mean, I already, time has not been very kind to big Papa. Big Papa looks like a shitty version of Darth Vader. If he was Dan, <laughs> if he was what? Dancing. Dancing. I look like <laughs> look like I look like I'm like 36, but I'm only 28. So maybe maybe working indoors will like stop the decline. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's true. That's true. Um, what did I look like? Shit. No, I mean it will stop the decline. No, you look great. Oh, thanks, bro. Considering, <laughs> dude, no, no, hold on. Like considering the stuff that you put your body through. You're in great shape. Now, I will say this, and I mean, I'm not going to get into this. I'm not trying to get on a soapbox or anything, but, like, I know a guy who's, like, he's been, like, a pack-a-day smoker since, like, like maybe the pa ha at least half of his life now. He's, like, my age. Yeah. Um, and he's been, like, in and out of the emergency room, like, three times this past month. And, like, they had to put him on, like, in, in uh, like, the in this, like, inhaling machine and everything. And uh, he refuses to get, like, health insurance. He doesn't want to get it, like, scammed. But there's, like, a growth in his body. Yeah, that's because his genetics suck. Yeah, but I mean, smoking is is bad. I mean, not that it's very bad. But I mean, the <laughs> I hate to say it, but at the end of the day, you can either do it or you can't. Genetic wise, I mean, I I smoke like two packs a day for what maybe ten years now, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm fine. I can still run heavy lifting, whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm I don't really have a smoker's cough really either. Maybe in the morning a little now that I'm getting older, but well, you know, like one day you know this stuff happens like like you know that like just split and uh you know i love you man i don't want to see you i don't want to see you go dude you know or it might not it might it's true it you technically can't say that um smoking causes lung cancer because not everyone who smokes gets lung cancer well it does and it does not it it, yeah. it, heighten, it heightens the probability that's for exactly sure. like as an epidemiologist and i love saying that Sorry, but I really wanted to say that. As, <laughs> as an epidemiologist, like um, you can only say that smoking and lung cancer are just very highly correlated, I guess. The funny thing, though, is when I looked at the numbers and crunched them myself, they're actually not. You'd really be surprised how weird it is. I think it, uh, God, I mean, <clears throat> if you take into account the amount smoked and the time smoking, it's pretty amazing the amount of people who will have lung cancer because of it it's actually you you'd think it would be a lot larger it's actually rather kind of small which i found to be pretty odd and interesting where i've known people who they haven't smoked anything in 30 years and they get lung cancer when they're like you know 50 55 
And then you've got some guy, he's like a mean old bastard, and all he does is like drink and he hates everyone and he smokes like three packs a day and he's just kind of trucking along like a turtle. Yeah, what you have to do is you'd probably have to take a look at like a systematic review and kind of see what, what they're saying. I mean, anytime, like, dude, I can't tell you how like frustrating it is when I'm, I, I, I like radio and I hate it at the same time. Like I like what radio used to be and it kind of is like where podcasts are now, but I hate the morning drive where, because they, and the reason why I hate it is because they exacerbate how people look at studies, but they're like, oh, a study shows that men are more likely to like drafts than women. A one study out of Stanford University that looked at five people said that men like drafts yeah. more than women. It's just like, stop, please Plus, stop. A lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, I guess you could call it uh, facts seeking. You know, like, hey, I'm going to use these studies to suit my shit. A lot of the studies that they use are garbage. If you go and you find a study in a certain article, they'll be like. Yeah, this study is basically garbage and probably shouldn't be used to quote any of that. Yeah, you know, and you, it's like I know nothing about like how people were selected, how, and it 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 sucks because I mean I'm I'm sure out of all my friends, you probably kind of know this the best. Um, when you're when you are really when you know a lot about something or a certain I guess uh, topic or or niche, like when people start talking about it, it's just kind of like. You, you have no idea what you're doing or talking about. You know, like, I, I do epidemiology every day, you know, so it's like when I see people saying, like, oh, we're going to use one study to kind of, like, tell people who don't know better that this study is, like, the word of God, it's like, what? You know? It, well, anybody can do a study. Any, exactly. It's, you know, it's very simple. It's a very simple thing. Just because somebody's accredited who did the study doesn't mean that they're a douchebag. Well, how was it reviewed? How was it selected? Is there systematic reviews that say the exact same thing? You know, like, because with statistics, like, you can't look at one point or one, like, one instance and, and conclude that that is representative of, you know, because it may or may not be, but you need a lot of, I guess, statistical, quote unquote, evidence. You know what I'm saying? Instances, replications that are saying the exact same thing. Right. You know, but I'm sorry. I, I wanted to get back to your pawn stuff. So, is this something that you think that you are going to be doing for the rest of your life? That you would want to do for the rest of your life? I I don't know, man. <laughs> at, at this stage of the game, though, at this stage of the game, I didn't go to college. You know, uh, I did. I've been doing this now for five, six years. I figure, just keep going with it. See where it lands up. You know, I mean the. Because if I were to move to something else, well, what's the point? I've already spent five, six years cultivating this. You know? Yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, so, like, let's say that money is equal, right? Like, wherever you're, whatever you're doing. So, like, I know that you keep telling me that you 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 stay in this because it's what's making you the most money now. Because, like you said, you've cultivated it now. If something else came along, uh, that that like like is it? Do you see yourself being able to do other things like? multiple other things that you would like doing better than this or no uh, in my opinion i'm one of the people that can pretty much do whatever the hell i want mm -hmm. um if i happen to be involved with it and then i decide to pursue it i'll do it it's whether or not i mean i've never been a guy where i'm like i've never thought that it would be possible for me to love my job and i still don't believe it's possible because at the end of the day a job is a job i want that so bad too who doesn't? But in my yeah. opinion, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and the problem is, is let's see. I mean, well, it's the same thing with like being a musician, for instance. I mean, let's say that you love something. Turn that something into a job. I can guarantee you in about three years, you're not going to love it so much anymore. Do you think it's a lot like food where if you just eat the same thing over and over again, eventually you get tired of it? I believe it does. And it makes sense from a neurological perspective. Yeah, no, that's true. But... I think that if I, you know, people told me that I needed to work out every day for a job, I think I could do that. Or, like, video edit those videos that I put on my YouTube channel and everything. Oh, sure. But, I mean, that's that's a, that's a kind of a uh, – it's something you do anyway. But at the same point, you can't tell me that if your job was editing and you edited videos for 10 hours a day, god damn it. <laughs> after, like, a good, you know, three years of doing that day in and out, you wouldn't be like – you know, maybe I'll just quit and move to New York and sell spicy hot dogs to people. <laughs> I'll try that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, you're right. You're probably right. So is 
pawning like what you see on Pawn Stars? Probably an easy question for you. No. <laughs> so how is it different? Like, like oh, tell, it's, what it's, tell, it's, tell me stuff that like people may not know about the pawn business being a pawnbroker. Okay. That you have to deal with all, all the time. Oh, I'll tell you something. You want me to tell you something? Because I'll I tell you. I want you to tell me. I'll tell you now. Me. Tell me. Okay. Let me just start off by saying this. I don't care what you have. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk to you about it. I don't want to know. I should find out what you have, meaning you should not tell me about it. You should simply bring it to me. You standing there telling me a list of 20 things that you have doesn't do anything for either of us. <laughs> the only thing that works is if you bring it to me and I estimate it and I hand you money. Are you talking about like if somebody calls you on the phone and tells you about it or what? They're just standing there because they'll stand there and they're like, they'll see the sports cards and they'll be like, oh man, I got a ton of sports cards. And I'm like, that's the problem. Everyone done! <laughs> not worth anything and i i don't care if you if you want to know if it's worth money bring it to me i can't list off to you what a samsung sm dash g489 is worth unless i know and have it in front of me can see the condition and whatever it just please stop <laughs> so do you are, are do you have a guy who knows everything about everything like if somebody comes in with like I don't know a box of used tampons, and you're and they're like, I want to use, I want to like, you know, know like what this is worth. And you'd be like, let me get my tampon guy. Um, <laughs> I mean, people generally specialize in certain areas. That's for certain. I mean, like if a guitar comes in, and it's something interesting, of course somebody's going to grab me. But I mean, uh, generally, if you do it long enough, you get to a point where you just kind of know what everything costs, uh, just by looking at it, because you know you you just know. Yeah. Yeah. So like, do, do you have to do any kind of research out, outside of your work hours to kind of figure out? I, I used to when I first started, but nowadays, no. Okay. Now, would your, would your manager get like super annoyed when you first started if you kept saying like, oh, I don't know what to do. How do I know what this is worth and everything? No, because I didn't do any of that. Oh, they kind of eased you into it. No. Oh. <laughs> no, it, it was like, all right, you're hired okay, now do this. And if you don't do it well enough, you're fired. Okay. I kind of like that Alec Baldwin scene from Glengarry Glen Ross. It's a tough job, man, because it's like, it, uh, I'd say out of maybe one out of 20 people make it the two weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. It's just one of those things. You can either do it or you can't. It's really... I mean, people think, oh, it's easy, da, 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 but it's very complex. At the end of the day, it's it's all it is is just basically being a merchant. That's all it is. Do a lot of people come in with stolen stuff? Actually, believe it or not, it, it really doesn't matter what I tell you because everybody's going to think I'm lying anyway or taking the piss. Uh, <laughs> but truthfully, uh, God, maybe one out of 100 items. Really? And how do you how do you know? Because if it's stolen, like generally you don't until it's okay. too late. The only time you know is when the cops call you, and they're like, "Hey, uh, we saw this in your database. Uh, we need to come and get it. It's stolen." But I mean, it's it's actually quite rare. That's the funny part. And you take and you guys take the hit on that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, okay. That's, that's true. That's true. So what is your protocol then? You give it to them and you move on. No, no, no. Like, what is your protocol for, like, stopping, you know, payment to something that is stolen? There isn't because you never know. Oh, huh. What are you going to do? Are you gonna, is this stolen, sir? Is this stolen, sir? Sir? <laughs> sir? Yeah, no, it, there's no, there's no protocol. There's no nothing. I buy it and I spin the wheel. If somebody's all like, hey, this is stolen and we got to give it up. Well, there you go. You just kind of move on. Then what what is the what are the things that you usually get the most of? Uh, electronics. Oh yeah. Anything from laptops to phones to pretty much anything. Um, so so if something like the new iPhone comes out, right? Do you right. get a lot of iPhone six pluses and stuff coming in? 
Uh, yeah, when you get it goes without saying when you get the uh, when you get the let's say the Samsung Seven came out. When you get the Seven that came out, it goes without saying. You know the the store was pretty much we had plenty of six. Uh, yeah. We had plenty of Galaxy Sixes then sold to us, so people could go and get the next model. Is the Seven the one that kept blowing up people's cars and stuff? The Note Seven, yeah. Note Seven. I, 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 I currently have a Samsung Seven. It's fantastic. Not no, a it's not, not a Note. It's not, it's not a Note Seven. Yeah. So do they recall those? Uh, they did because they probably don't want to be involved in various lawsuits. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, no, that's probably true. Um, what is the most valuable thing that you've ever had come into your store that you know you just kind of looked at and like, I can't believe that this is here right now or was the most you've ever paid personally for something? I mean, I've done transactions in excess of $20,000 myself. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm like the only person allowed to do those transactions with exception of the owner. Um, one time there was a kilo coin of gold. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a Chinese panda limited edition one. It's somewhere in excess of $45,000. Who in Fredericksburg is going to want to come into your pawn shop and buy that? Well, that's the thing. I mean, most of our business, uh, most of our business, it, it involves, it, it doesn't involve in-store sales at all. A lot of oh, it, it's online. A lot of it's online. I mean, that's pretty much anything nowadays, honestly, because, you know, you can generate so much more income online. And honestly, if you are, <laughs> I mean, if you're basically, uh, let me say, how, how would I say this? I guess I could say if you're going to sit there and depend on people to come into the store and make money for you, at the end of the day, you're a damn fool. Yeah, right. So is your I guess your business is doing pretty well if you can do transactions of that magnitude, right? Well, yeah, but transactions of that magnitude, in all honesty, they don't tend to make you very much because, I mean, for instance, let's say we bought the gold coin. We sold the gold coin later that day. Oh, did you really? Oh yeah, it basically existed in the store for maybe a few hours and it was gone. Is that is that something that usually happens? Because I figure that not not oftentimes you'll have, you know, stuff like that selling immediately, right? Of course you do. Really? Because like not a lot of people on there are a lot of people online who would I guess buy stuff like that. I guess. Oh yeah. Huh. Oh, instantaneously. And uh, that's the funny part about it because people would think that it's kind of like the whole thing with watches. It's like this with watches. Can I sell a $100 watch? Perhaps maybe in a year. Can I sell a $500 watch? Perhaps maybe in six months. Can I sell a $5,000 watch? Yes, I can sell it in about half a week. Really? Because I just figure that people don't really have that much capital just rolling around, you know? Well, I mean, it's not that very many people do they don't at all most people are broke and worthless like me but there are there are people who have plenty of money i mean if you look at a town for instance let's say the population of a town or a county is anywhere and let's say i don't know say you have twenty thousand people if a hundred of those twenty thousand people have an excessive amount of money who's to say one of them doesn't like watches oh yeah no you're right i guess it's and and the people who want to spend that kind of money on watches are the ones who's looking for those kinds of watches, right? Right. Oh, I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. That's the same thing with eBay. I mean, at that point, numbers don't even matter. At that point, it's all like, all right, here's millions of people. Do you want to buy the shit or not? Yeah, no, that's true. I, now, do you use eBay typically? Is that kind of what you use? It's really the only option. I mean, the, the monopolies are illegal, but they certainly have one, don't they? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. Trying to think of like what other auction site, yeah. No, well, the <laughs> just because something exists doesn't necessarily make it effective. <laughs> That's true. I, every time I'm on eBay, I'm just, I'm just like I, I don't know, man. I just feel like it, it. It's it's a weird thing. Like when I go on Amazon, I'm like, okay, this is a legitimate business. But every time I'm on eBay, I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm buying, you know, from people, you know. That's not true. That's not true at all. No, I'm, I'm sure it's not, but it's just like when I go into EV, I'm just like, I don't, I don't, this kind of seems like a black market kind of thing. I know it's not the Silk Road, but. No, I mean, that's why there's verified sellers and seller ratings. And honestly, 
a lot of people are ridiculous with the eBay thing because eBay has changed a lot. Uh, back years and years ago, it used to be like the wild, wild west, whereas nowadays um, the system is so heavily for the user that uh, there is no problem shopping on eBay. If anything, you can just take advantage of people as the user as much as you want because the rules are so skewed towards the user. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a, it's come a long, long way. Okay. Is, is eBay like the only kind of, I guess, place that pawn shops would use to sell? That I that could be called effective and worth any amount of time yes oh okay that's cool that's awesome i mean etsy of course you can list antiques and rings and things like that but i mean at the end of the day does it deal well with flow and volume no it's just not the same i mean so, it doesn't have a it doesn't the demographic nearly isn't as large so what do you expect you know yeah so so what what uh is that does your boss kind of instruct you on like kind of the highest you can go in any transaction? Like how do you know if no. you're wildly overestimating something or wildly underestimating something, you know? I just do. It's just it you know, you there's a lot of shit involved. I mean it well let's say you have an item. First you look at how much it is retail value, then you look at how much it is retail on Amazon, then you look at how much it is retail on eBay, then you look at it from various other places, then you kind of average all those numbers together. So you have your retail price or something that looks like it. Then you look at how much it's worth used market. You look at how much it is in stores. You look at how much it is on Amazon, how much it is on eBay, how much it is on perhaps maybe Craigslist. And then you average all that together. But at the end of the day, it's just simply if I have something that I, it's worth about $50, I'm going to pay twenty five to twenty dollars for it. Right. Yeah. What kind of what kind of customers do you get usually coming into there? All walks of life. When the <laughs> when the government got when various government positions in uh, Virginia got furloughed, for instance. Yeah. I had plenty of people in suits in my store. That's for certain. Uh, but what's the average customer like? There is not, once again, people are going to be like, Shane's taking the piss, da, 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 da. nobody's really going to believe me what I say, but I mean, it's so completely and totally random, it, it's ridiculous. Anything from some redneck guy with no teeth to the old lady who needs a couple bucks because, you know, her social, uh, uh, what's that, what's that called again? Security. Yeah, her social security sucks and isn't enough anywhere to uh you know various business owners who need to move ten twenty thousand dollars because they need to pay a bill at a certain time but they don't want to do it through somewhere they want to do it you know not through a, a bank they want to do it there anything you could really imagine government employees military everything because at the end of the day if you think about it pawning is a pretty it's a pretty goddamn luxurious service no, I mean, I, I guess so. Well, think about it like this. Can you walk into your bank and be like, can I borrow $500 right now, please? No, there'd be like a lot of steps. Yeah, it doesn't really work like that. Or can you walk into your bank and be like, hey, can I get $20 for gas? I'll, oh, yeah. I'll come back on Friday and give it to you. No. So if you oh, have, right. It's like the people's bank. The people's thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it, it totally is. That, That's what they should call it. They shouldn't call it a pawn shop. They just call it the People's Bank. Well, because most people don't know. I mean, I mean, are there grimy pawn shops? Sure. And it's sponsored by The Rock. Right. And it's like, uh, I mean, honestly, I knowing now what I know, I'd rather use a pawn shop than a credit card. I forgot that people use that. For that. Wow. So what kind of... Uh... How do you discuss like the value of like if somebody comes in and is like I want five hundred bucks, what kind of thing do you need to see to give them five hundred bucks? I need something worth about one thousand one hundred to one thousand dollars. Oh, because if it's lost, well then I need to sell it. Oh, now has there ever been an instance where you do that and the person couldn't pay up and they just came in there like sobbing, saying like No, I can't, I can't part with that or whatever. That's actually rather oddly rare too, but I 
it does happen. It's happened. It, of course, it happens. But it, it's not as it's not as common as you think. Because I mean, let's face facts. We live in a society of consumers. Mm -hmm. I mean, who's gonna cry about their PlayStation Three when they've probably gone through two of them and have so much other shit stockpiled in their house that they wasted money on? Well, have they? Has there ever been like an instance where someone's like, "Here's my like husband's." wedding ring he gave me back in the 1940s or something and they couldn't pay it back and it's yours now all the time and they like freak out when they can't pay it not generally maybe one out maybe two out of ten well what was an instance where like something like that happened no well, just somebody they they loaned too much and got into a bit of a tip and they couldn't pay it back no, I don't. I don't want anybody's stuff because then I have to get off my somewhat fat ass and then price it. It's it takes up my time. Ideally, I just ideally I'd rather have people pick up their stuff so I don't have to do anything. Yeah, right. It's pretty funny because people do this weird shit to me where they're like, "Oh, you want my stuff?" I'm like, "Buddy, I, I really don't care about anything you have. It's not <laughs> impressive at all to me. I'd rather oh, you wow. get it." If you can't pay your bills, that's not my problem. That's your problem. Or, you know, people who are late on their bills are like, oh, I'll be in so-and-so. I'll be in so-and-so. I'll be in so-and-so. And it's like a month late. And then you forfeit it and sell it. They're like, I don't understand. And they're like, it's the same as anything else. Why don't you call your car insurance company and tell them that you can't pay them for a month? What will happen to you? Hmm. Why don't you call your power company and tell them that you can't pay them for a month? What will happen to you? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't understand why some people can't wrap their head around the idea of a simple transaction. Right. That's true. That's true. Well, it, I mean, it sounds like you have a really interesting job, man. <laughs> it is interesting. And plenty of interesting things happen. And plenty of really crazy things happen where I, I'm just like, ugh. It's not like Hardcore Pawn at all, though, because that... Hardcore Pawn. No, no, people don't freak out or anything, not at all. Oh, really? May, is, do you think it's because of where you, you're located? or? I, I think it's probably because common people know that it would be a very, very, very bad idea to do that. Yeah, the, that's true. The place is covered in cameras. There's large caliber handguns, you know, randomly around. There's. Are you allowed to deal in guns? Yeah, we do deal in guns, yeah. Okay. Now you need, like, a specific license Which to do that. That, that is so stupid what do you mean just the, the, the guns in general it's stupid it's stupid it's to, stupid to sell in guns no like whenever you hear it's one of those things where you're like hey if you would just read you wouldn't sound like such a dumbass when you talk about things you know it's like that whole thing you were talking about earlier where people just start blabbering on about shit that they have no idea about you know like the social justice warriors with gun control you know Mm -hmm. Well, we live in Virginia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in Virginia, let's say you come to my house. I can legally sell you any gun I want without a background check or anything. It's perfectly legal. I think that's true. You don't have to, like, switch licenses or anything like that? Nothing. Okay. I just, you hand me the money, I hand you the gun. That's is it. it. Under, is it under a certain amount? Doesn't matter. It could be anything. I could hand you 10 guns. You need to register the gun? No. So why the hell am I doing background checks? <laughs> that would mean that I'm only doing background checks on people who are lawful and care about legally purchasing guns. Uh, yeah. It's stupid. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who would, you know, that, 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 that does kind of have a lot of people with arguments, you know, and everything about that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people want to talk about like loopholes like that, you know, with people Sorry. acquiring guns. It's not even a loophole, Jason. <laughs> to have a loophole, it has to be something that's by the wayside, or perhaps uh, maybe a bit interesting, or perhaps maybe something what one was not expecting. There's nothing loopholeish about me just blatantly handing <laughs> guns because it's perfectly legal. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. So it's like the paperwork thing is so stupid because I'm sitting there doing these massive forms, doing massive background checks, when in reality, if you wanted to, you could just go and buy whatever the hell you want from some guy. In in Virginia. Yeah, in Virginia, for instance. Oh, I didn't know that. 
and, all, and, and, and in all honesty, and in all honesty, it's so easy to buy guns anyway, in any state, if you really want to, if you oh, really, sure. that's, that's, a, that's the deal with a lot of things, I think. Yeah, that's, that's anything. That's kind of like saying, uh, it's, it, it's, yeah. it's just, it, it's so stupid that it, it just boggles my mind. It blows your mind. It does blow my mind because people start ranting and talking about it when they don't understand anything about it. And it, yeah. it, it, it certainly doesn't help anything, that's for certain. And then when you look around uh, various government things and agencies, like you look at the amount of money we spend on anti-terrorism and all this other, all these things, and yet you can't stop teenagers from blowing up hundreds of people with pressure cookers. It's like how positive of a message of that, uh, you know, it's like, hey, our budget for the intelligence was somewhere in excess of a billion dollars this year. God damn, can't defeat those pressure cookers. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, I'm not trying to make a laughing matter out of it. But... You're right. Um, before we go, though, and I, we, just, we took a lot of time talking about pawn shops. I mean, because I'm just very interested in your work because I'm just very interested in it. But when is the Danzig reunion thing going on? Oh, the Misfit show? Yeah. That already happened. It's, it was fantastic. Did you, did you see, like, clips of it or what? Yeah, the whole thing's on YouTube. Oh, is it really? Yeah. What's the name of it? Just Misfits Reunion Show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you liked it? I thought he did really well. I mean, the guy's like, I think he's somewhere in the neighborhood of his. God, he's got to be early sixties now. Oh, uh, did I tell you that Doyle liked uh, my Misfits shirt picture? Yeah, dude. Because uh, and Doyle's Doyle's a beast, man. You can look at him. That's a big dude. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. I, I think I like him now. I remember, and you can tell me what you think about this. Um, I, I was looking at a video of him, like talking about you know meeting up and doing like a Misfits tour or whatever. With he said, music is the only industry where you can have a lot of people just refuse to make millions of dollars. Yeah, or some, they, something along those lines. They hate each other, basically. Yeah, but like he's just like what he was saying was pretty much like. Look, who cares if we don't like each other? We will get paid millions of dollars to just play music in front of people. Oh yeah, but it's it's one of those. I mean, I I can understand what he's saying, but I can also understand the other side of it. You know, if I don't like somebody, no matter how much money I'm gonna get paid to do something, if I really don't like them, I I don't care. I just won't do it. Well, let's get into it a little bit, and you can tell like stop me if I'm going too deep or whatever. Um, there have been instances where you may have had like creative differences with, you know, musical projects you were involved in, correct? Right. Uh, if you guys were very popular, and I think you told me that you actually got offered like a, like a, uh, label, like kind of thing over in the Nordic country, like Nor Norway or something. This, this is actually true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and well, I guess before I ask you your question, like, so why, why, why didn't you, oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm back. I'm going to backtrack. If you were big and huge and whatever, and they said, look, you guys cannot stand each other. You don't want to be in the same room with each other for three minutes. But if you were on stage for an hour, two, three times a week for a year, and every time you stepped on stage, you would make hundreds of thousands of dollars, you wouldn't do that? I mean, usually when other musicians decide not to get along and do things together, usually... Well, see, Danzig, he doesn't, he doesn't have to get along with anyone. He has his own blossoming career, you know, that uh, provides money for him. So with or without the reunion, he's fine on money. It's kind of yeah. like when Bauhaus reunited. Peter Murphy's solo career is just fine. He doesn't need money. And if he hates them, why the hell is he? Even if it equals money, he doesn't have to do it. He's completely comfortable without doing it. Now, the other people, on the other hand, if they're not well off financially, of course they want to do it. Hmm. Hmm. Now, what, what made... I actually don't know too much about like what made Danzig leave the Misfits. Uh, from what I read about it, he wanted to start doing more darker stuff, dealing with the various horrors of humanity and dealing with, uh, you know, demonic things and... He wanted to get more real. He he wanted to stop doing the whole kooky, 
you know, uh, like yeah, show kind of stuff. Whereas Jerry only was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. That's bad. I just want to do B horror. Yeah, basically. And Danzig was kind of like, well, you really don't do anything for the band, so oh, I'm made. Uh, he just didn't. He wanted to move in a different direction. He had already begun to move in a, di- a different direction before their last show. He was already writing and doing things with Sam Hain or producing Sam Hain stuff. In fact, some of the Misfits tracks are Sam Hain tracks. So, what is Sam Hain again? Sam Hain was Danzig's band right after the Misfits and right before Danzig. It started right after 1983, and it is fantastic. You like it a lot, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sam Hain is a great band, a really weird band. It's like a mix between punk slash metal slash post-punk with some experimental stuff thrown in there with some... It's just weird, man, but it's fantastic. So Sam Hain, Danzig, and Misfits, which one do you like the best? If you had to pick one. God. Like, you can only... like. Which one of those was your favorite? In terms of importance during my lifetime, probably Danzig. In terms of generally, like, really appreciating the material and it being unique, probably Sam Hain. Okay. Now, I, I, don't get me wrong. I know every single Misfits song, every single one. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but. And it's an amazing punk band. I, I don't know that there are too many punk bands that, in my mind, are better than the original Misfits. I mean, there's plenty of punk bands, and everybody will hate on me for saying that, but it had a great mix of catchiness slash realness slash aesthetics. Yeah. It was, it, it was very good for its time. Um, and it was before a lot of other punk bands that were big came about. So you also have to give it credit for that. But I don't really um, – it's not as entertaining to me or as interesting as the his other stuff, such as Sam Hanger dancing. Yeah. No, I hear you on that one, man. So I'll have to check that out. I didn't know it was on, on YouTube. Oh, that? Yeah, it's, it's freaking great. Uh, I don't think they're going to do it again, though. He already – I believe he already talked about it. He said that's about it. Is there a reason why he wanted to do it? Um, he said that, you know, he said that he wanted to do it before he gets too old is sort of a nostalgia thing because he said there's a bunch of musicians he's seeing kind of dying at an early age for, you know, just, you know, like Prince, David Bowie, all this other stuff. And he said he wanted to do it as sort of, you know, because everybody's been trying to get him to do it now for 20, 30 years. And he just said he just wanted to do it before everybody gets too old and, it's just not possible. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. We need to, you know, I still want to make a uh, metal song with you. Uh, yeah, no, actually, one thing I've been thinking about lately is, um, one thing I've been thinking about lately is, uh, I think that you, me, Salty Dave, and some other person need to do like a low budget thriller film in Manassas. Dude, we should. Like, we could do, um, like if you ever, an, I, I no the idea I had for the movie did you ever see that movie Very Bad Things? No. Well, the idea I had for the movie was that we could make a low budget, and basically the idea for the movie would be like me and Dave end up hanging out with some guy or whatever, and we have like a crazy drugged up drunken night or something, and we wake up the next morning and he's dead. And you guys just kind of try to backtrack what happened. And we have to like figure out how to get rid of the body or something. Like try and do like a black comedy. Dude, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that could be. Good. I actually, you know, since October's coming around, I was actually gonna one of the topics I wanted to talk about tonight. Well, not tonight, but when October comes around, because like you're very into like the horror genre, right? Like not so much. You're not a guy who's like I have to watch horror movies, but you like the aesthetic of like you know that kind of stuff, right? Correct. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd want to talk to you about like you know horror movies and stuff, and like maybe we could make like a. Some sort of like kind of horror movie and i wanted to ask you about like your opinion on the way horror is like going nowadays you know what i'm saying it sucks yeah like, yeah <laughs> like if you want if you wanted just a plain basic answer so we don't have to talk for like an hour more yeah just tell you this it sucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that'll be a teaser for our next episode everybody 
Yeah, yeah, cue Big Papa ranting and drinking mm-hmm. cheap beer and talking about horror films for an hour. Well, he drinks like... Oh, we should we should do that, though. We should do that, because I remember back when you were doing the cheap, uh, the low-budget flicks and stuff, you're always like, man, you would be a great villain or a great crazy guy. We need to get you down to Manassas, and I'd be like, uh... You're talking about low-budget as though I had a choice, Shane. What do you mean? What's wrong with low-budget? Low-budget is... Good. No, no, no. I was in high school, so, of course, everything was low-budget. <laughs> What do you want me to say? I didn't, I, I didn't have a budget. I never had a budget. You still don't have a budget, you cheap bastard. That's I know. That's So when you're saying we should do a low-budget film, okay, I don't okay, know what okay, you okay. mean. Like, you think, I, you think I have the capability of making like a feature-length like box office movie? Oh. Good, Jabroni. <laughs> Dude, but yeah, we should uh, because the people who like make movies up here, man, like, I just don't know like there, if there's ever going to be and, and don't call out names because I know who you're going to think of, but like... <laughs> And, and any anyone who would like make movies like up here like i'm just i i don't know like how how um plausible it would be to see anything i guess kind of like come to fruition or whatever so like someone like you and me you know we get like dave or something like we we should make like a horror movie for october i think that'd be really great actually yeah just do a really simple uh 30 minute kind of i i think that uh, i think the thing about horror is that it's stepped away from the it's just there's nothing mental going on anymore. It's all just chicken shit gore, basically. It's like let's see how much blood we can throw on the screen, and people will be like, "It's so horrifying." Torture porn. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, maybe uh, maybe we will make like a thirty minute or something. Um, and maybe people can watch that, man. Yeah, let's brainstorm about it. Maybe get maybe you come up to Manassas one t- one day or whatever. We get like Dave or whatever, and. Uh... We sit down, we brainstorm, and we just like film it. Would you be able to get like some like chicks for it or something? Uh, that's the problem. I don't know anybody. Anymore. I think Dave would probably be able to help us out with that. Uh, Dave or dude, wait, why are you why are you asking me to get people? You're J Train. You know, like fifty people at the gym. Like, why why can't you get like some bikini model or something or like I don't I don't know. Yeah, well, the thing about women is this. You know, they're not like hard to talk to. Oh, wait, but, like, you got no, no, no. You did the you did the thing. You did the thing. You did the Michael Bolton thing. The Michael Bolton. Oh, that thing. You well, got that the, was... You got that chick to come in and like she's like in her underwear, like handing you like a like a spray. <laughs> Drove up like two hours, man. Right. So if you if you can't, oh, you you suck at life. If you can't get <laughs> if, you can't, if you can't get people to be involved in this, what the hell are we talking? We about? but we need a good plot that i could like okay here's the deal if i got a good product i can sell it well of course. okay does that make sense j train that's what you do and okay. yeah no i i told you i told you i said about 30 minutes a thriller slash horror it has to have limited location like for instance you know how there's movies where the whole set is one thing and yet it's a mate it's a great movie yeah that's what i'm thinking too yeah that's what it, it needs to be done like that it needs to be done like it's salty dave's house or something that's why i thought about somebody dying and we don't know how he died and let's say a bunch of people were looking for the guy and me and salty dave like have to like hide him in the jeep or like hide him in the closet or something. You got to like dress him up in the backseat or something like that with like glasses and like a mustache or something. Yeah. Either that or like drag him into the, drag him into the living room, put him on the couch and like, there's like a cop there. And it's like, do you know what happened to this man or whatever? He's fine. Why won't he wake up? He's pining for the fjords. What? What? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Something interesting. I don't don't know. But I, I, I have a feeling if we do this, it could be pretty good. Yeah, especially yeah, you could make like your acting debut. Black comedy, dark comedy. Yeah. Well, hey man, thank you so much for being on this podcast again with me. I think this was a good second episode. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm sorry I started flipping out about the gunship, but I, it's. I oh, know it's fine. Oh, I'd like to sit you in a room and have you do twenty of those forms. You love it. <laughs> no, I bet I would. So. Yeah. All right, man. Well, have a good night and everything. And uh, everyone check out this uh, episode on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash the J train uh, slash J train show. Uh, find look us up on uh, the J train show on iTunes and subscribe and everything. If you subscribe to youtube.com slash Nataku one, two, two, four, you'll also see this pop up. So thank you everyone and have a great time until next time. Later.